بسم الله Can I ask you this one? When they can bring the extension to put this on, yeah? أخونا أحمد أحمد في المستشفى الـ ICU صار له ثلاثة أيام أحمد صار ال صار له ثلاثة أيام عملية كبرى عملية على الـ على الليفر الليفر اللي هو اللي شو اسمه الكبدة أوكي يقول سيز هي جزاك الله خيرا حبيبي 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 الله أكبر بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه موالا I do apologize to everybody it's uh, tonight it was just a, a nightmare regarding the traffic uh, it's just like going through the battle subhanallah um, so we shall we start by dating the class and it's tonight is the 5th of December 2023, and normally we start with the Hijri day, 22nd of Jumad al-Ula, 1445, and this is, tonight is the episode 53 from the Prophet's commandments, and it's the 40th commandment. 40th commandment, I was thinking about what commandment of the Prophet should I be talking about tonight, and I thought that the best thing is that <clears throat> to give an injection for the classes of the knowledge and to show the importance of the knowledge. When we find one of the era of the followers, a person called Qais ibn Kathir, he traveled all the way from Bilad al-Sham to, sorry, from Medina to Bilad al-Sham. Bilad al-Sham to Medina is about, you could say, a thousand miles, give and take. thousand five hundred actually, because you're talking about crossing Jordan all the way. So, He's going from Medina to Bilad al-Sham to meet somebody called Abu Darda, who was residing there, him and his wife. Abu Darda, may Allah be pleased with him, one of the great companions who was a satic, known for his keenness to be uh, as close to the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, so this person, he traveled. Now the means of travel, it could be camels, it could be foot, it could be anything, but it's never going to be cars or... So you could see how many days. If it takes from Mecca to Medina, it's about four days. This is about triple the distance. So you're talking about two weeks of traveling. Then when he saw him, he said, I came to take a hadith from you, which I've heard that you narrate from the Prophet of Allah. Now this hadith, he's already heard it from somebody else who said, I've heard it from Abu Darda. Because he wants to have high isnad, that means he wants to be closer to the Prophet, he doesn't want to have a wasita, a link between him and, and the Sahabi. So it's him, Sahabi, and then the Prophet. So he traveled all the way just to gain one hadith, ikhwani. another lecture, one hadith, just one hadith. Of course, the hadith is the hadith of the Prophet of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, can I just ask you to fill up the glass, ikhwani? Sitting against the wall, Wallah, it's not going to help you with gaining knowledge. Believe me. To be close. Right, so he saw him. <clears throat> he said, I've heard that you are narrating a hadith from the Prophet. He said, He did not come here for merchandise, trade, because it was well known to do trade with Bilal Sham. It's well known for that. He said, no, he didn't come here to marry a woman. Taking that distance all the way, just for the knowledge. He said, I just came for that hadith. So when he came for that hadith, he gave him the prize, which is the hadith, the gift. He said, 
I've heard the Prophet ﷺ, he said, من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سلك الله فيه طريقا إلى الجنة. If a person took a path through which he wants to gain knowledge, Allah will put him on a path that will lead him to paradise. وإن العالم لا يستغفر له من في السماوات ومن في الأرض. And verily the scholar, all the inhabitants of heavens and earth, they make, they make istighfar, seek forgiveness for this person who is knowledgeable. حتى النملة في جحرها and even the ant in the whole of it حتى الحوت and that is the fish in the sea قال وإن فضل العالم على العابد كفضل القمر في ليلة البدر على سائر الكواكب and the excellence and comparisons between a knowledgeable person and a just a mere worshipper is like the difference between the moon when it is full compared to the moon or compared to the rest of the, 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 the planets See, if you look at the stars, I should say, they're really they're shining, but they're not shining as much as the moon. And if the moon is there in full, you're not going to see stars next to it because of the light of the moon. So this is the difference between the person who has got knowledge and the person who is just a mere worshipper. So how about if the person is ignorant in terms of ibadah and ignorance in terms of knowledge? But the difference is incomparable. And then he said, Wa inna العالم وان ان ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم وان الانبياء لم يورثوا الا درهما ولم يورثوا درهما ولا دينارا وانما ورثوا العلم فمن اخذ به اخذ بحظ وافر and the prophets did not bequeath their dinar or dirham money but they bequeathed knowledge that means the, the, the prophets when they die whatever they leave is going to be sadaqah there is no such thing that there will be a inheritance from them Except whatever is left inside the house from the house expenditure. Like Aisha, anha, when she said that the Prophet he died and there was some wheat on top of one of the shelves or barley. And uh, it's left there and I kept taking from it as much as I can. And it looks like there's barakah in it. Until I took it from the shelf, started to count and wait. Once that I weighed, it started to finish. And that is why we say, if is there something barakah, don't count it. Just take from it, keep it, barakah, Allah will be there. So this is inheritance, but an inheritance which is allowed. That is whatever is the expenditure, nafaqah, left by the Prophet. So the Prophets do not leave any money or any land to bequeath to their heirs. Uh, whatever they have bequeathed is the knowledge. He who takes the knowledge, then he has taken a great of abundance, a great of good. So the inheritance that is being passed by the scholars, by the prophets, to the scholars is the knowledge. Is the knowledge. People at the time of Jahiliya, they used to worship idols and used to eat the dead animals. Al Ja'far Mabi Talib when he explained to the king of Abyssinia the difference of how they were and how they became after the revelation and after the Prophet of Allah was sent to them as a prophet. So they used to sever the kinship, they used to eat the animals, they used to bury the girls when they're alive. They used to, uh, used to be bad neighbors, all of those bad things they used to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to have mercy upon them. He sent them Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the most uh, excellent person, most pious person on the face of the earth. The most pious person on the face of the earth, without any doubt, is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of hearts. So he had taught him and he gave him the book. So Allah he said, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَحَدًا وَوَجَدَكَ Allah found you ضَالًا Here means ضَالًا is not misguided. ضَالًا that means you don't know what is the book. You don't know what is the knowledge. It's not misguided. Remember the Prophet ﷺ was on the religion of Ibrahim ﷺ. He never had any to do, anything to do with the slaughtering to the altars or prostrating to the idols. He used to meditate far away from these people. But he was not knowing the knowledge that he had afterwards. So, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا means what he found. Allah found you to be not knowing the knowledge. مَا تَدْرِمَ الْكِتَابِ وَلَا الْعِلْمِ He did not know about the Qur'an. He didn't know about the, the Imam. So he taught you what you didn't know. And then he guided him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the best of the manners and the best of the deeds. As Allah Azza wa he said in Surah Yusuf, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين. 
So you, we have given you this good stories, Ahsan al Qasas, best of stories, <coughs> which we have revealed in the Quran, even though that you are not aware of all of this. You are not aware of the Quran. Also, Allah when He said, Wa anzal Allahu alayka al kitab, wa alamaka ma lam takun ta'lam, wa kana fadlu Allahi alayka azima. And Allah had sent upon you the book, Quran, and the wisdom, which is the Sunnah. And he had taught you something which you didn't know. And the excellence and the bounty of Allah is upon you is great. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal, he commanded the Prophet وسلم, to increase in gaining that knowledge. So giving you the knowledge, but also to increase and ask Allah for that increase. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمَ And say, O Lord, increase me in the knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred and gave this, granted the favor to the uh, uh, illiterate, the Ummiyin, by sending the Prophet ﷺ to them and teaching the Prophet of Allah to teach them. Allah he spoke about that in Surah Al-Imran, verse 164. Allah, Allah had, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had conferred a great favor upon the believers. بما علمهم بما علمهم بما بعث الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم وهي said to them what رسولا من أنفسهم a messenger from amongst them يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم reciting to them his verses and purifying them ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة and teach them the book and the حكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لا في ضلال مبين even though they were in a manifest Era or manifest misguidance. So Allah Azza wa Jal conferred the granting of this great favor on the believers when he sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to them and he taught them how to uh, recite the verses and also to teach them and to purify them. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he had commanded those people whom the Prophet was sent to to express their gratitude for this type of blessings كما أرسلنا فيكم رسولا منكم يتلو عليكم آياتنا ويزكيكم ويعلمكم الكتاب والحكمة ويعلمكم ما لم تكونوا تعلمون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون meaning just like we have sent you a messenger amongst you who would recite for you our verses and he would purify you and he would teach you the book and the wisdom which is the sunnah and he will teach you things that you didn't know about so remember me i will remember you and grant your thanks to me and do not be deniers so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this he had encouraged us as believers to seek the knowledge and to travel for it in the verse which Allah well, he speaks about in Surah At-Tawbah, verse 122. Kafa. It is not correct for all the believers to get up and make jihad. From each group, just a group that will go for the jihad. From each of these believers, a group that will go for the jihad. As for the ones who sits behind, لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ So the ones who remains behind, and they don't go for the jihad in order to gain knowledge in the religion. So when the, when the people who are making jihad went back to them, they'll start teaching them what they have learned. So that they will be warned against all types of shirk and haram. So the Allah Azza wa Jal, he is encouraging us to say that to us, that yes, jihad is important, but gaining the knowledge as important, not to say even if it's more important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had showed us in the Quran the honor of the person who's knowledgeable, the rank that he would reach to. Allah would elevate those who had believed from amongst you and the ones who had gained knowledge, darajat, ranks in paradise. So Allah Azza wa Jal had shown us the honor of this person who is gaining the knowledge. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal had made it clear there is no comparison between the ignorant and between the knowledgeable. The one who's got common sense, they will understand that Allah will never make the ones who are knowledgeable to the ones who are like 
not ignorant. No way. Because the one who's knowledgeable, he sees. And the one who's ignorant is blind. Because the knowledge in itself, we know, as we are uh, kids, we used to learn, Al-ilm nur huh? Something like, Al-ilm nur Now, the secularist, they said Al-ilm nur they're meaning what? Physics and maths, by the way. That's what they say to us. Al-ilm nur it means they're teaching learning physics and maths and yeah, but that nur is not the one we're talking about. The nur, which is the light we're talking about, is the ilm of the deen. It's to know how to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. What's the point if you are a professor in maths or physics, but yet you worship a stone? What's the, what is that going to go to, good to you? It's going to do nothing to you. So the knowledge that we are, we want is the knowledge that will get you closer to Allah. This is the one will remove the darkness. This is the one which the supposed to be when we say al-ilm nur. So... When the person, uh, he will start gaining the knowledge, which is getting closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, then he is going into the light of the knowledge. As for the ignorant, he always doesn't know what he's doing uh, in the darkness of the ignorance, just like the blind person who is not guided. He can't find his way out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had actually... Uh, took the testimony of those scholars onto his monotheism. So Allah took the scholars of the knowledge, the knowledge of the deen to be his witnesses uh, that he is what? He's one, the monotheism, instead of the shirk. Allah, when he says, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu. Allah testified that there is no God worthy of worship except for himself alone. والملائكة, and also the angels العلم, and also the, the people of knowledge so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that his witnesses for his oneness is the scholars along with himself and the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so including this knowledgeable are the prophets because the prophets are ulama scholars and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had also commanded his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is, to take the scholars out to be witnesses for his message that he's been sent with. Allah he says, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And the disbelievers, they will say, what? لَسْتَ مُرْسَلًا You are not a prophet, not a person who's been sent by Allah azza wa jal. Say to them, قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ and that is, let it be enough, sufficient, that Allah is between me and you, between me and what you say, is Allah is to be a witness. And then, وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ And the one who's got the knowledge of the book. So Allah Azza wa Jal is refuting the argumentation of those disbelievers when they accuse the prophets, are they to be not prophets, not to be sent by Allah? Well, just tell them, Allah is the witness of them, I'm a prophet. And also, وَالَّذِي عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ and the one who's got knowledge from the book, he is also a witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he had told that the prophets on the day of resurrection will take the scholars in deen to be their witnesses from Ummat Muhammad. So the knowledgeable people from Ummat Muhammad, they will be the witnesses for the prophets who have been sent before the prophets of Allah to be the ones who are delivered the message. So... The hadith here in Sahih al-Bukhari, the authority of Sahih al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, that he said, the Prophet said, يُجَاءُ بِنُوح Nuh will be brought on the day of Razarakir. فَيُقَارُوا لَهُ هَلْ بَلَّغْتْ will be said to him, did you convey the message to the people, the message of monotheism, Islam? He would say, فَيَقُولْ نَعَمْ يَا رَمْ Yes, O Lord. So he said, okay. He will ask, his ummah, the one who's been sent to. Did, did he convey the message to you? They will say, Ma ja'a min Bashir, we didn't have any warner, not even glad tiding. No, we didn't have anything from him. So, did he convey to you the message? We didn't tell us anything. Liars. So, Allah he would say to the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, this is just to honor, everything is known to Allah. To Nuh alayhi salam, who are your witnesses? He will not have witnesses from his ummah. No, but he will have his witnesses. He will say, Muhammad sallallahu wa ummatu. My witness is Muhammad sallallahu the greatest of all scholars. Muhammad sallallahu and his ummah. So he will say, you will be brought 
in order to testify to the Prophet Nuh السلام, then he recited the following verse in Surah Al-Baqarah وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وسطة. And how we made you the best of umam, the best of nations لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا In order to be witnesses over those people on the day of resurrection or to, this, to those prophets for their nations have been sent to and Allah and also the messenger will be upon you as a witness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told that us the scholars are the ones who will be having the final say, whether it's this dunya or in the akhir. Yes, the final say. As in the dunya, Allah said, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Ask the people of knowledge. He didn't say go and ask the kings. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So they have the last say regarding the dunya. As for the akhira, and when the hour takes place, yuqsimul mujrimun. The, this, the, the criminals, the disbelievers will start making an oath. Ma labithu They did not stay in this dunya except for one hour. That means an excuse, O oh Lord. I mean, you didn't give us enough time. Subhanallah. When they were alive, they denied the nur, they denied the deen, they denied the ilm, the knowledge. And now, when they are in the hereafter, they're denying what? They're denying something which is, you know, we could see it. You spent about how many, 50, 60 years of your life here, and you're saying that only what? One hour of the day? What a liar you are. Liars in the dunya, and liars what? In the earth. We haven't spent except for one hour. They just tried to excuse, oh Lord, you didn't give us enough time to go and worship you. All that time, this is how you used to be lying as well in the dunya, denying the haqq. As for the people who had got the iman and the knowledge, you have stayed until the day of resurrection, until you are died. And this is the day of resurrection you have denied, that he was not going to exist. But you were people who do not know, you were people who are ignorant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the people of knowledge, they will have the final saying in the dunya and the final saying in the akhirah. So Allah azza wa jal, he had commanded us to ask the people of knowledge if we don't know. They had the last verdict. كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Too many verses we're going to quote here and too many hadith as well regarding the excellence of the knowledge, but we have to because we have to make sure that everything is planted well in the mind and the heart. How great is that the person when he gains knowledge, then he Allah Jalla intends good to him. May you Allah be khaira, you faqihu fi din. If Allah wants good to you, then I will give you what understanding in the religion. This is the honor. This is the nobility you can have is to have the knowledge of the deen. Talabul ilm faridatun ala kulli Muslim. To have knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim. Here the knowledge is the knowledge of the deen. So, talabul ilmi farida. It is compulsory. It is obligatory upon every person who is a Muslim. And also, Prophet said, لا حسد إلا فتنتين. There is no envy except for two things. So if it's an envy, you could envy these two things. رجل أتاه الله الحكمة فهو يقضي بها ويعلمها. A person has been given the knowledge. So he would use it. To, uh, to give the verdict and the rule, and at the same time, he is teaching it. And another person whom Allah had given him money and wealth, that he had made him to go and use his money, all of it, in spreading the haqq. Also the Prophet of Allah, he said, الدنيا ملعونة, ملعونة All the dunya is to be cursed. Whatever is in it is cursed, except قال عالما قال ذكر الله وما والاه وعالما ومتعلما ذكر الله ذي من صلى الله وما والاه and the likes anything to do with ذكر of Allah صلاة صيام زكاة and عالم scholar and متعلم the one who is a student those are the ones who are being exempted from the curse مجتمع قوم في بيت بين بيوت الله any group of people had gathered in any house of the houses of Allah قال يقتلون كتاب الله Reciting the book of Allah And they are learning this book of Allah In between them The book of Allah doesn't mean just the Quran Anything to do with the deen Regarding the deen That our gathering now The angels will come and descend down upon them 
and also the rahmah, the mercy will encompass upon them. وذكرهم الله في من عنده and Allah will remember him and mention these names of these people who were in this gathering before the high inhabitants of the heavens, before the angels. Look at my slaves. They are, mashallah, doing dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Dhikr of Allah here is the learning of the deen, not the dhikr of Allah as the Sufis, which is shaking the hand right and left. That's not correct. This is not from the deen. That's why we find that Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah in his Sahih. He, po- he made the following chapters. He started with the chapter Al-Wahi, then Al-Iman, then Al-Ilm. Al-Wahi, revelation. Ilm, Al-Iman means faith. Then after that, after the, in that sequence, and then Al-Ilm, and knowledge. So he started with Al-Wat, Al-Wahi, revelation. And he then after that, he made Al-Iman, which is the uh, faith. And the, 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 which is Aqidah. And the last one, which is the knowledge after that. It's like he's saying, that the knowledge is the means to gain the Iman. And the knowledge, the source of it is revelation. Because the knowledge here we're talking about is taken from Quran and Sunnah. So he's saying to us, the knowledge, the source of it, Al-Wahy, Quran and Sunnah. The knowledge is your path, is your way, okay? Is the means to go to have Aqidah, proper Aqidah. So, just like the scholars, also they are the inheritors of the prophets. So the understanding of those texts from Quran and Sunnah also been inherited by those scholars. Prophet ﷺ, he taught, he was taught by Jibreel alayhi salam from his Lord. So the Prophet of Allah then he taught it to the Sahaba, the Sahaba taught it to their followers and so on and so forth. So. But, but, uh, until the, this knowledge had reached us. So we want to make sure that you understand. Not every scholar or knowledgeable person, he's fit to be a teacher. But the knowledge has to be taken from those scholars who are muhaqqiqeen. They are making sure whatever they pass from the knowledge is authentic. And it has some sort of signs. Number one, that his... Knowledge is being taken from scholars. It is not taken from internet or from here and there or just a bit of book and a bit of book of there. So uh, uh, it is not the person who reads one book or reads the internet or reads a newspaper. That's not the scholar. So you'll find that this such a person, he will run away from the knowledge. He will not sit, has no patience even to sit in a circle of knowledge to learn. Uh, when it comes, of course, to uh, tea gathering, so, so, tea sort of uh, chat, chit chat, it will be there. You'll find him number one, Allah Musta'an. And then you'll find these people got long tongue when it comes to the scholars. That scholar doesn't know anything. That student knowledge is not going to And he himself, mashallah, he just keeps looking this person and that person. Secondly, he has got no kibr, arrogance. He's no arrogant. To take the knowledge from the person who is above him, of course, and from the person who is level to him, and even to take the knowledge from the one who is what? Below him. So if somebody is below him, like, maybe he gets at something. And somebody goes, ah, he's lower than me. I can't take this. I need even true knowledge. No, that's arrogance. Thirdly, he is a person who implements the knowledge that he teaches. So it is, كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنَّ اللَّهِ أَن تَقُولُ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ He's saying something, don't smoke and you're a smoker. It doesn't work, ikhwari. So you command the people for something, you have to implement it on yourself. And that is why Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he used to make hijama, and whenever he makes the hijama, he gives the hajjam a dinar. Dinar is a golden you know, money, which is equivalent to 4.25 grams of 24 carats of gold. You're talking about now 200 pounds. Huh? A gram is, no, sorry, 60 pounds. Sorry, 60 pounds. Yeah, no, no. Dinar, so the gram is 60 pounds. So four multipliers, about 60 pounds, yes. So about 250. 250 pounds we're talking about. So he's given about 250 pounds at that time, the inflation, yeah? To the Hajjam. He was asked, why are you doing this? He said, like, because he put in his Musnad, the Prophet of Allah, he made hijama and he gave the Hajjam one dinar. Because he put in his Musnad, he said, how can I just make hijama? And I don't do the same like the Prophet of Allah. Okay? I put that in my musnad, I have to implement it. And by the way, the hijama 
is recommended for the person who is in need. Okay? It's not the hijama because I want to do hijama. The hijama was a need. It's got a headache, it's got something, but I've got nothing. Let me do hijama. That's not correct. Maybe it's going maybe to affect you wrongly, in the wrong side. So hijama is whenever it's need. It's fantastic. The Prophet was a the hadith which Sahih Bukhari, Muslim, and other sunnah. Hadith narrated from a number of companions. The Prophet of Allah, he said when he went to the Isra, every time he passes by angels in the heavens, as he's going up, they would say, Mur ummataka bil hijama. Command your ummah to do what? The hijama. So we take the knowledge from those people who are synchronizing their act to what they command the people. These are the ones who are called and be Rabbanis by from the, how you teach the book and also how you learn the book. Rabbaniyin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He had prompted us and also His Prophet وسلم, prompted us to take the knowledge from those Rabbanis because. And that take that knowledge from the Rabbanis before their death. Because their life is safeguarding for this Ummah. Um, as long as they're alive, Alhamdulillah, have scholars. And also because amongst us they are Rahmah, mercy. And also they are Khair, good and Barakah, blessings. The scholar, when you have a scholar, you're relaxed. Okay? So when the people have that, this is the scholar I want to seek. These scholars are the ones. And when they leave, the knowledge leave with them. Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna Allah la yaqbidu al-ilm antizaan yantazi'uhu min sudur nas." Allah does not remove the knowledge by taking it out from the chest or the memory of the people. Suddenly you wake up, ah, I didn't memorize the Quran. Suddenly you wake up, and everything that from the knowledge disappears. No, no, it doesn't disappear like this. But walaki yaqbidu al-ilm biqabul ulama. But He takes the knowledge away by what? Passing death upon the scholars. Hatta idha lam yuqi aliman. When there is no scholar left, the people will take heads, which are ignorant. See, a ru'us could be the head of a tribe. It could be a person who's in position. It could be a person who's got big head with a big turban on top of it as well. Ru'us means known, means distinguished, juhala, ignorant. They've been asked and the... Uh, they have given not answer without knowledge, so they've been misguided themselves and they misguided others. So if you have taken this knowledge from the scholar, the right scholar, before he died, then the scholar did not die, nor the knowledge had died. Listen, if you have taken this knowledge from the scholar before he died, then the scholar did not die. Because still, you're going to quote this because you have taken it from uh, my sheikh told me. So his, his, his name is echoing. Uh, echoing after after his death as well. He's dead. So if he took that scholar's knowledge, he's got students. So the scholar, if he died without students, the scholar dies and he's mentioning, he's remembers, nobody will be here. But if he's got students, what would we say? Qala shaykhuna. And the student, the student, Qala shaykhu shaykhina. Okay, so his name is there. So, and also the knowledge will not die. But if the people start to be ascetic regarding the scholars, that means they already come to the scholars as much and they did not come to their classes and learn from them directly, and they preoccupy themselves by the dunya, then when the scholar dies, the knowledge die along with them. So, the events and the tribulations, they need scholars, ya So in So, for example, in the Hadath al-Ghazza, Gaza, and the tribulation of Gaza, when we had this, we had Gaza 1, Gaza 2, Gaza 3, this is Gaza 4 maybe. Uh, version 1, version 2. But when we had the verse versions, we had our shiukhs there. Sheikh al albani was there. Sheikh Ibn Baz was there. Sheikh Ibn Uthameen was there. Whenever we want something, we just ask them. Nobody can dare can say, there's no YouTubers can just put that you know, sound next to the shiukh. Well, nobody nobody listened to them. It's a scholar. They listen to the scholars. So we had passed through, uh, the, for example, Iraqi war, if you remember, the Gulf War. It was a fitna. And we had scholars there to ask them. Alhamdulillah, the scholar, Sheikh Albani, we used to ask him everything, khalas. When he tells us something, we understand because he is the inheritor of the knowledge. So if they don't find any scholars, the people, then they will take what? Ru'usan Juhala. It was said to Sayyid ibn Jubayr, Rahimahullah, one of the great 
uh, followers. He says, was said to him, what is the sign for the people to be finished, doomed, destroyed? He said, if the scholars had died. So the scholars had died, that's the sign that the people had finished. Some of the Salaf, they said, people start, will stay upon good. MashaAllah. As long as the first stays there alive to teach the one who comes after. But if the first had died before the, the, the one who comes after him, the generation did not learn, people have been finished. Okay, so if there's no link in the knowledge, you take it from the scholars, not from the internet. Internet helps, but it's not the scholar. You take it from the scholar himself, and then that link is broken, and the people will be finished. So as long as the scholar is there, he's got students, and the students, then they will have students, and so on and so forth, and the link, is, the chain is all the way taken by, you know, by the ring of, its, uh, of itself until it reaches the Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is the one who taught Jibreel, Jibreel is the taught. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, companion, companion to the followers, and so on and so forth, until it reaches us. Now, how do we take the knowledge from the book? We have to take it with the following conditions. Right. So, the, how do we take the knowledge? Number one, okay, accompany the scholars. In particular, just as, as much as you can. And take from them the keys of the books. Yes, and I mean what I'm saying, the keys of the books. For very scholars, they said, uh, the knowledge was in the chest of the men, which is the Sahaba. Then it was transferred into the books, but the keys of those books still in the hands of those men. Do you understand? So the knowledge transferred into the books, but there's a key. That key is in, the, in these people, with these people. Whatever is in the chests of those scholars, it went in the books. And you need to have the key by spending time with the scholar. So many people of youth have been misguided because they did not take the knowledge from the scholars. And they ended up bullying them, talking about them, defaming them, even to say, pass it takfir upon them, then after that, killing him. So, um, you basically ليس منا من لم يوقر كبيرنا ويرحم صغيرنا ويعرف لعالمنا حقه. He is not from amongst us the one who does not respect the elders, have mercy upon the young, and he does acknowledge the rights of the scholars of our scholars. He has to. So uh, also to depend upon predecessors books, first ones, and the ones who are followed. Uh, the, the, the knowledge of the people who are before is better than the people who are comes later. And he's all the time, he is in link with the scholars. He will ask them about the minute and delicate situations because those things that you can't find them in the book. It's not really, into, you know, put the question into, you know, into the Google and the Google will come up with an answer from those websites. No, there are things that only the scholars can give it to you. That's you need to ask them about those very delicate matters. From the Ashrat al Sa'ah, from the hour, okay, uh, you could say signs, is that the knowledge will disappear and the ignorance will come and prevail. And also he said, the last hadith in a quote, Prophet he said that the knowledge will start to decrease and the jahl will start to increase and the zina fornication will increase and also drinking the wine will increase which is the intoxicant drinks, and women will increase, men will decrease, until we have for every male 50 females. That's the ratio. Every male huh, have 50 females. That's because of the wars. Lots of men will die. Women will be more. Okay? And it could be maybe Allah will, will make the production uh, of the birth it will be more of females than the males, but that's going to be close to the day of resurrection. أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى لي ولكم الثبات على دينه وأسأله عز وجل أن يغفر لنا. If you have any time, it's 9.04. I know that I'm started a bit late. Um, I would have liked to uh, continue to talk about why is this hadith is important. Why this hadith is important. Because 
as al Hafid ibn Hajar, he said that those things which are the five things which uh, it, it, it shows us that the system is going to be um, not good. Once these five things is not correct, then the balance is not correct. Because you see, the fornication is linked to the lineage. If a person, you know, his lineage is not 100%, it's chaos. So the people are not out of proper marriage, they are out of what? Fornication. And also the drinking, when it increases, it means intoxication of the what? Of the brains, so the intellect will disappear as well. Also, when you have fitan, which is 50 women, one male, that means they're gonna have the wealth and the self, all of those as well, they're gonna be in, in jeopardy and in danger. And then the last thing, which is the knowledge, the knowledge, if it's gone, that means the deen is going to be affected. Our crisis, Yaqwan, is supposed to be more in the deen, not in the bodies. Loss of the deen, loss of the proper scholars is the chaos, is the disaster, is the one that we should be uh, moaning about. Of course, people, when they die, and it is the people, but it is not as much as when the scholars had died. When the scholar had died, Ummah, it dies with him. Uh, Allah Mustaan. Taib. We'll stop here, inshallah. Give you time for questions and answers. Um, for 15 minutes or for 10 minutes. I need to go before the roads start blocking because of the roadworks. <laughs> yeah, subhanAllah. They'll start 10 o'clock before the 10 o'clock. They're cheating sometimes. It's time before 10 o'clock. 10 to 10. And they block the whole motorway. And they've got to go around the whole world just to go to get to your place. <laughs> Allah Mustaan. Now. Can I do hijab as a business? Okay. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had hajjam. And this hajjam, he came to him, he said, Messenger of Allah, they give me for hijab. Don't take it. I've got children. I'm looking, you know, like you know, orphans and you know, I'm in need. Don't take it. Uh, but give it to your animals. Transport. So use it for your petrol, okay? Give it to your petrol, as a petrol. So, but at the same time, Hadith Muslim of Ahmad, Prophet of Allah, he made hijab and he gave what? One dinar. One dinar. So I will give the money, and at the same time, I'm telling the hajjam, it's better not to use it for your own expenses. But it's not haram. Remember that. Prophet of he said, give it to you, because if it's haram, don't use it at all. Haram, don't take it. But it's better not to take this because you see, number one, this hijama is a dirty job by the way, it's got blood and all of this, it's not really easy. Number two, uh, Islam wants to make, sh make, it, make it available to everybody, the one who doesn't have and the one who has. So we want the hijama for the people who are you know, in need of it to be free of charge. You know, I've never thought when I was a kid that we're going to be paying for, you know, uh, the deceased to wash him. And we are paying now. I couldn't, I couldn't believe this is going to be becoming a business. Uh, when my mother died, because uh, may Allah have mercy upon her. So uh, I had to uh, know the new system because I've been left the system for a long time. And I've just seen mafia. There's a mafia there. On the so soon as my mother died, there's a mafia around her from the workers. They're waiting, they're looking at me. So I said, okay, just took the paper, I did it myself. It just take about five minutes. Oh, she's asking. How she's asking now? Okay. She's not saying labor. <laughs> huh? Like this, no. She brings with her the shroud, the coffin, shrouds. So when she brought the shrouds, okay, the shrouds has to be from the money of the deceased. I wanted to know the shrouds is the normal shroud. So I, went, I was on the phone with the sisters. What is this shroud? I want to know. Okay, piece of cloth. Look, is there any trousers in it, sirwal in it? Because sometimes the shrouds, they put kameez, they put sirwal. It's like they dress up the, the, the person who's dead. I can't remember there wasn't, or there was, or taking it out. Okay, all right, Jazakumullah khair, Alfred. And she had a wash. Then she's asking us for 80 pounds. Now, 
What is that 80 pounds? Shrouds because it costs about 15 pounds, 20 pounds maximum, the piece of cloth. So there's about 60 pounds for labor. I said, this is, I mean, something like this, please put your prices before we deal with you. Washing the deceased, uh, well, 50 pounds. Or, you know, wash one, get one for free. <laughs> Business. <laughs> wash one, one get for free. If you had two people died, you give, give them half price, each one. It's supposed to be this is for the sake of Allah, Ikhwan. I never imagined this, Wallahi. And now the massager, they do that. 600 pounds in some of the places. They will give you full wash and... Uh, huh? Yeah, an ambulance and everything. More than 600 pounds, about, I'm talking about 15 years ago. It's much more now. A lot more now. 2,000 with a car, yes. With the, 2,000 pounds. Actually, you know, I would put him in my own car. <laughs> Cheaper for me, seven seat I'll bring. Okay, or a van, and I'll take it. And I'm gonna bring black van, I'm gonna bring the whitest van I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> These people don't know what they bring black. Do you understand me? Well, why is it black? Prophet said the best of your clothes is the what? The white. And these people, they put the black. But they shroud them, alhamdulillah, with white. So why are you wearing black? Invitation of the kuffar. But the disbelievers, they put black. We put black. Shouldn't I? I will bring the white car. I will always tell the brother, bring the car. Why don't you, can we have just the deceased car, white cars? Why are we having black? I don't understand that. And then, after that, they put this... Uh, piece of cloth which has got writing on it. Ayat from the Quran, Surah Yaseen. Or, I to wrap this cloth and don't put it on top of that, of that coffin, that box. Don't do that. This is not bid'ah. And plus, you're humiliating the words of Allah Azza wa Jalla to be put like this, and like something like a decoration for this. Allah Musta. People are very ignorant. They just want the money. It's a job for them. And the person who does the disease, it, you know, for him, it's just he says it so many times. It doesn't affect him. It doesn't do anything to the heart. When you see the disease, you're, you know, scared. Shiva, you're going to be like him. Allahumma ya Rabb. Allahumma ya Rabb. Allahumma ya Rabb. Hina ala al-Iman wa mitra al-Iman. Okay. Fadal. I thought it was a hijama. Look, the question is all of it about hijama now. <laughs> Then I'm just, I'm just saying, no problem. No, no. Hijama to copy the Prophet of Allah. Hijama, the Prophet of Allah did not do it until he was in need. So he had a headache, he had a hijama. He had a, uh, something where in the hip, it's called warik. Okay, warik. Here, he had, he had a hijama here. And he had also a murif. Yeah. But it's because he needed it. It's not because, you know, do you understand me? So when you have hijama, you have it because of the need. It's not because a hijama is a sunnah, it means a hijama, no. Hijama is, is sunnah for the person who is in need. But it's not sunnah for the person who doesn't need it. And hijama has to be done with a person who knows to make hijama because if he does it wrongly, in the wrong place, he might damage as well. Like my hijama, when he started the hijama, somebody made hijama, alhamdulillah, in an area which is safe. But he was cutting like this. Shh, shh. I said, second one, stop it, Akhi. Or third one, I can't remember, three ones. And it stayed for me for one year, three lines, like a cat clone. You know? Shh. It's supposed to be small, but this one. Yeah. Allah He had my back to learn. So, khala, stop it. Allah Mustaan. Yeah, it's my brother who done that to me. <laughs> he's having me as a guinea pig to try me. <laughs> Three lines and enough. <laughs> and they stayed for, for one year. Every time I look at the mirror, <laughs> they're stuck here. Hijam, <laughs> ikhwani, it's a, it's a great thing. And mashallah, there's a sister... She's now studying how to teach the woman hijama to be proper hijama, not to mess about because there are hadith which is not authentic. And she's been sending me a hadith, whether it's authentic or not, and to send me where is the where is the kahil, where is the akhdaan, Prophet Muhammad 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 Muh
uh, Umm Mughif, which is uh, Wasat al-Ras. Uh, so all of these things, um, and uh, what is beneficial, what is not beneficial, and what are the days which are not recommended to make the hijama, and what is the days which are recommended to make the hijama, are the ahadith regarding this is authentic or not. So for example, don't make the hijama on Al-Arbi'a, Wednesday, which is the time when the disease struck Ayyub alayhi salam, okay? And he had got the shifa on al ithnain wa thulatha on Monday and Tuesday. So to have the hijama, al ithnain thulatha, okay, and then to avoid arbi'a, okay, to have it also on khamis, to avoid taharriyan, al jum'ah wa sabt al ahad. That means don't really focus for the jum'ah and sabt al ahad. If you want to do it, do it, but don't try that uh, jum'ah, let me do it because it's a nice day, okay. But as for Wednesday, avoid it. Naam. And the best of the days, it is which is the 17th and the 19th and the 21st of the lunar month. Because one of the hadith talks about jazr. Because you know the blood is got like tide. The tide, the blood's got tide as well. Jazr uh, mad. Mad wa jazr. So this, the tide here. So it's actually the 17th and the 19th and 21st will be the best time for that hijab. Wallahu a'lam. Now, but if you are in need, you could make it on any day. Even on Wednesday, if, if you have, if you are in pain, if you're desperate, no problem. Now, if a person is studying, and there's a lot to study, a lot of different like Quran, 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 Hikki, whatever it is. What's the, what should a person focus on, especially as a beginner? And also, what's what the, is the, the best, thing in the UK that we best thing for the beginner and the person who does not speak Arabic? Best thing is to focus upon. I wouldn't say a focus on the expense of others, but if you want to make sure that you um, get the proper knowledge, is Arabic. The Arabic is the, the key. You will never gain the proper knowledge if you don't know Arabic. Regardless of how eloquent speaker you are, and how good you are, you're reading English books, uh, you're not going to gain the knowledge. The knowledge is in Arabic. First thing is Arabic, because Arabic then you start opening the treasures. Treasures there in front of you. You, you, you talk... talk what? Where have I been? What is this? So then you will understand how to do, study usul fiqh, usul hadith. Usul in his Arabic. You can't just say usul in English. You could fiqh in English, but not usul fiqh. The principles and the qawaid and okay, uh, the kulliyat, the juz'iyat. Those, those things have to be in Arabic. Uh, so along, along with your studying in Arabic. So if the person has an appetite, and each appetite differs. Some appetite is to be with... Memorizing Quran. Some other appetite is to memorize hadith. Some other appetite is to uh, go into the fiqh. Some appetite is just he likes the tafsir of the Quran. It depends upon your appetite. So each one has got different appetite. If you are, mashallah, appetite of everything, alhamdulillah, do everything. <laughs> mashallah. But uh, you will find yourself, Allah will put you into the thing that you like. So Shaykh Lidbay did not want hadith. Started with the deen and then suddenly... When he just did Al Mughni and Hamil Asfar, he wanted the hadith. He liked that. Very difficult topic. The most difficult topic where people run away from is the hadith. Yeah. To study the man and who is this man and Jarah Ilm al Jarah al Nobody wants it. Like his father, he said, Hada Sharat al Mafalis. People who are who want to be always bankrupt and poor, they go into this field. Yeah. No, field of fiqh gives you money, field of hadith gives you money, but this one, Alim al-Mafalis. His father is like, you're going to get nothing out of it, no money. Subhanallah, had opened the doors of the hadith to you. Uh, Shaykh, what is the best thing for a person who is studying Arabic? Like, what is the best way of learning Arabic? Is it the same way that you're learning Arabic? Or is it like something different? Yes, yes, yes. I'll say, Abd, Aida, please, Aida. Yes, please, please. Hang on, let me just give you her permission to ask a question. Just please, everybody, make dua for Ahmad, who is the one who's all the time who's in charge of my uh, co host. Make dua for him, he's in the hospital for the last three days. That Allah may give him shihab. Everybody make dua for him. Dahar al Ghaib. Fadal Yaqti. Salam Tarakatu. First of all, if we're studying at home and we're watching the Olympics, we're watching the students of knowledge from our homes. Do the angels also descend upon those who are in their homes, for example? Do they also get that benefit? Right. Uh, I do understand that, that some of the people, they don't have the access to sit with the scholars, especially the sisters. 
sisters always left alone and they're not really always with the brothers. We do have sisters at the moment listening in this class. Even they are in a different room, but still the angels are around them. So the sister is asking, do we, can we have the uh, angels as well when we are talk, taking the knowledge from online? I mean, I can't say no and I can't say yes, but I know that once the person start doing the of Allah Azza wa Jal, the angels will try to come. And once the person leaves his house empty from Quran, always music, shaitan like to come. Ah, it's our house, we found a place for us. Okay, so the Quran and the deen cleans up your house. So definitely, when you come to the house and start learning the deen and making the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, I'm not depriving the sisters as well from having the angels sending the rahmah and Allah Azza wa Jal mentioning them before his height. Look, they are gaining the knowledge even through uh, online, which is anbu'd from far distance because they haven't got the access. Okay, it, it reminds me of the same thing as person drinking zamzam from zamzam and person taking zamzam and drinking it away from zamzam. Do you understand me? The Prophet Sallam, he taught us through Abdullah ibn Abbas, which is the dua he used to say it when he drinks the zamzam. Allah min yasalku ilman nafi'a wa rizqan wasi'a wa amalan mutakabala. Uh, so this dua, is it the same? And as well, the Prophet he said, uh, زمزم Zamzam is according to the intention that you drink it for. Is it there? Or can, if somebody brings in Zamzam to UK, is the same? We say, we can't say no for the person drinking Zamzam in the UK, but definitely you'll get it where? If you are next to Zamzam. Same thing here, definitely going to get the angels when you aren't sitting in the house of Allah. But I can't say that the angels are not going to come as well to the house which you are taking knowledge from, you know, online or whatever, you know, Wi-Fi. So, Wallahu A'lam, same thing here. You have, inshallah, the uh, dua of the Zamzam, even if you are drinking it from UK, because you don't have the access there. And we do have the Prophet of Allah, companions, used to take Zamzam with them. So when they go from Mecca to Medina, they, th they take Zamzam with them as well. So carrying Zamzam is being uh, documented in the history as well, taking Zamzam. Now. والله تعالى أعلم وجزاكم الله خيرا وأحسن الله إليكم بارك الله